We're not. What's the Center for Democratic Renewal? Center for Democratic Renewal was formed, uh, in fact, I was one of the three founders of it, was formed exactly 10 years ago, it's our 10th uh, anniversary, uh, to combat the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Uh, at the time, we called it the National Anti-Klan Network. We had just had a demonstration in uh, a little town of Decatur, Alabama. We, we had uh, three of our people had been shot. Uh -huh. uh, we, uh, we said we will be back, came back 10 days later. I was acting executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference at the time. Put together the first march, well, hadn't, we're not, we had, hadn't had a march for a long time. Uh -huh. It was the first march of the end of, uh, of the 70s is really what it was. And uh, Mickey Leland, by the way, was uh, in that uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, in that march. He had uh, just uh, become a uh, uh, congressman then, uh -huh. and he came down to join the march. But 3,000 people came into that little town, Decatur, Alabama, and hardly anybody ever heard of. And for the first time for a number of years, but three of our people have been shot. Following uh -huh. that meeting, uh -huh. uh, that march, uh, uh, three of us were talking. Uh, a woman who heads a legal group in Detroit, in uh, New York, uh, a woman uh, from Louisville, Kentucky, who has long been a, a, a real civil rights uh, struggler and fighter for justice for, in fact, their organization, SOC, will have its 50th anniversary this year. Right? Mm. And a uh, uh, woman is white, both of the women are white. And, um, uh, and the woman who heads the legal group, her legal group uh, is the one that's uh, fought uh, to return uh, the properties back to the Philippines, okay. uh, right, from the Marcos family. Okay. Uh, and we, we were talking. And uh, so I put our conversation into words and capitalized it, said, let's call it the National Anti-Clan Network and start a new organization. So okay. I went back to SCLC's office and took all three of our, of our uh, 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 n list of names, uh -huh. uh, all of us have a great national network of names, and started calling. Uh -huh. And we formed the Center for Democratic Newark. Our main job is, is to fight the far right. At the time, the Klan was it. Okay. Now what we're dealing with is no longer we're simply dealing with the Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan is the least program of the groups. Okay. The less dangerous, actually, the groups are dealing with, all right? Okay. But you have to deal uh, uh, with war, uh, the white Aryan uh, uh, resistance, right? You have to deal with the, the uh, uh, underground that robs banks and brings trucks in order to give money to all of the, uh, uh, to the white uh, resistance organizations, given as much as uh, uh, $600,000 to one group. See, uh, uh, the Klan, uh, uh, what we were trying to do early uh -huh. was to get rid of the Klan right quick. But the whole racist surge uh -huh. was far beyond the Klan. Okay. See, and that's why we have to see that, 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 for instance, the Nazis, the Nazification of the Klan. See, the Klan used to think about simply terrorizing and intimidating blacks, okay? Right. With the Nazification of the Klan, their whole theology, their whole, their whole philosophy was different. Uh -huh. What they wanted to do was the elimination okay. of black people, right? Okay. By any means necessary, if you like using those terms, okay? okay? okay. Is, uh, uh, so that uh, uh, they bolstered that with their own religion, okay. which is the identity church. Okay. And the idea uh, goes back to uh, uh, English thing, of which, uh, which at the Center for Democratic Renewal, we've written a 150-page piece on. But, uh, are those that, kind of uh, the, are, are the, is the identity church in any way similar to some of the right-wing religions now, like you have the, the four well and those kind of people who just no. seem to be so not so strict and no no, okay. no. it's mm -hmm. not a matter of strictness it's a matter it's a matter of certain kind of beliefs about people's right. identity right all right and they believe that Anglo-Saxons were called by God to be in charge of everything in the world and that everybody else is uh, a church and whereas when you look at it it's almost exactly the opposite uh, when you look at the whole arena uh -huh. around which uh, uh, the Gospels came, there right. weren't any white people as we know them. Right. Huh? There weren't any Anglo-Saxons. Nobody right. well knew about <laughs> England. In fact, in truth, in truth, there wasn't an England in the in the real strict sense. That's true. See, what we have to really realize, there wasn't any Europe <laughs> right. until until the 1800s.
Right. No, uh, there wasn't a Germany until Bismarck created uh, uh, Germany in the 1800s, right? right. And so uh, uh, there wasn't a bringing together of Europe. There were individual uh, uh, city-states all over what is now Europe, right? right? Uh, which were no more than tribal units right. to use terms that Americans don't like to use about themselves but like to use about everybody else. Right. Right? Uh, uh, who was it? Wasn't it Camus who said, uh, the great French philosopher, who said that, uh, uh, modern contemporary French philosopher really, but who said uh, uh, is that Euro-Americans should understand natives. They created them. Right. <laughs> You see, so that when we look at it, when you talk about ancient history, there's no way you can talk about Anglo-Saxons. Right. But what they have done is to take the idea that they are the greatest and most important thing and that God himself has ordained them for right. no other reason than they're white. Right. right? Uh, ridiculous, but <laughs> hey, strange how many following such ridiculous people yeah. get. And then, based on that assumption, uh -huh. then nobody else is important. So everybody else becomes a lesser person, right? right? So uh, the idea is that they're white, so they represent the light and good in the world. Right. If you are dark to black, then you represent mud. Hmm? And those are their terms, mud people and light people. Right. You get my point? When they're talking about light, they're not about color, they're talking about essences. So right. I mean, is, uh, 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 because that's the way they think. Why? Because it feeds into their racism. Right. Uh, 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 you're, you're talking about uh, the posse comitatus in the Midwest, uh, who basically is an economically based unit who their racism is directed toward Jews, right? Mm -hmm. But you see, what you, they, they, they say, it's, you know, uh, all the economic problems of the Midwest of the farmers was because of Jews, right? Is because what we're dealing with is people who have no intact sense of a political of analysis. Mm -hmm. A cheap political analysis leads to this kind of nonsense, right. all right? So Jews are their problem, right? It, it, because they need somebody to blame things right. on <laughs> rather than blame themselves, right. all right? So that makes a good one, given the history of this country, mm -hmm. right? Racism has been basically directed toward Jews and blacks, right? right? And, uh, but remember, anybody that hates Jews today hate black tomorrow. Anybody hate black today hate Mexicans the day after right. that, all right? Is right. that the transfer. haters hate, right? Just so transfer. what our job is, is, is for all of us to work to get rid of racism in the nation, right. no matter who it's against, nor what group is giving any particular reason for a racist attitude. Right. See? Uh, that's our basic need in the culture, uh -huh. right? and uh, uh, how we deal how we deal with that's important, and that's what the Center for Democratic News is about. Now, okay. what we do, basically, what we do in this first ten years, what we've done is prepare cities, uh -huh. towns denominations, right, uh, education systems, for <laughs> racism coming into their towns, okay. for racist groups when they come. Okay. See, how do you prepare a city before, before the racist the group comes in? Right. Uh, when you know they're coming, how do you prepare that town for it? All right. Well, we are the experts on them. We got the materials on them. They don't yeah. write anything or involve in anything that we don't study. Okay. Right. Uh, we put out a weekly uh, news piece, we put out uh, a monthly magazine, uh, we put out uh, special pieces like uh, when hate, what to do when hate groups come to town, uh, uh -huh. uh, the identity church. Uh, so we reveal stuff about them. All right? We put out a whole curriculum. Of, well, we didn't really put this out. We caused the NEA to put out one, the National uh -huh. Education Association, to put out a whole curriculum on hate groups, uh, the whole history. Okay. Right now, the difficulty is is to get southern states in particular to use it. I was just getting ready to ask you, how do you get people to accept? Nah, that's the point, and that's the difficulty. Because so a lot that's of people one don't of the want reason, to believe it. That's well, that's one of the reasons we went to NEA, so they put it together. Okay. See what I mean? Not just a group, but the NEA. But that's that the National has Education has an Association, yeah, okay. which nobody has to worry about being accurate. But the okay. thing is, it's a whole lot of school systems that don't want to study hate groups because of their own racism. Right. They won't have to deal with it. Right. Uh, and remember, all the groups that are targets, are, for instance, you have groups that, uh, uh, you, uh, that uh, their hate is, is toward Vietnamese right. uh, in Texas, another group that's toward uh, Hispanics right. all up and down that shore. 
right? right. Clear around the California, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but remember, all of these, mm -hmm. these same people also hate blacks. Right. Because it is traditionally set within the parameters of the hate groups to do so. They know the society will allow them. Right. All right? Hate, they have to hate somebody. That's <laughs> right. Well, and the society allows them to blame right. blacks. All right. right. And so, and so they do. With the end of racism, the problem. Let me put another line to you. Is that racism has the greatest evil in this society. It has destroyed more people psychologically and physically uh -huh. than any other single factor in American life and has done it longer. Right? automatically makes it the greatest evil in American culture. Right. Yet, people do not want to deal with the fact that racism destroys people like it does. And it affects people every day of their lives. Right. Okay? And we're talking about multi-millions of people. Uh -huh. Like I was sharing with you before, my grandfather died about 10 years ago at 94, and I asked him what we ever overcome. And he looked at me without thinking and said no. Mm -hmm. and, well, and what you meant was without even having to think. He didn't, yeah, without having to think, he said no. And then last week, um, there's a special on PBS this month with James Baldwin, and he was asking, you know, how long for progress. You know, he says, you know, you, you tell me that I must be patient, must have time, but you've taken my mother's time, my father's time, my sister's time, my nieces, my nephews. He just went on and on, and then he just, you know, they, they, they cut it at that point. But it made a lot of sense, and so my, my question to you, you know, do, do, you, do you see that the, the involvement and um, the things that, that you're doing and the things that you're seeing, do you, do you feel that we'll overcome, or if we have, or are there some maybe things that, that we can do at this point to keep the dream alive, or is it necessary to keep it alive? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's start with the last one. <laughs> it's always necessary to keep hope alive. Okay. All right? Without hope, people die. I mean, right. You can more easily do without food and clothing than you can do without hope. Okay. Right? You have to believe in the possibilities of hope. But the other thing is there's ever reason to believe. Right? Okay. Let me give it to you. At the same time I know everything negative, which is far more deep and profound than anything I'm going to say positive. Right. Right? Yet there's enough positive to let us know that in spite of this culture we're making process, progress. Right? Okay.